With so many Atari 2600 games that are out there, it's hard to tell which ones are actually worth playing. And in this video, I'm gonna showcase 20 of some of my favorite games for the Atari 2600. Before we get to that, how are you feeling? You got John Riggs here. I have a huge passion for video games, especially the retro stuff, so make sure you're subscribed. Click that bell too, because you don't wanna miss out on any video. I do at least two a week. The Atari 2600 was what kicked off my passion for video games. True story, being the sixth of seven children growing up in a house with one TV, I would wake up as early as I could and hook up the Atari myself just so I could play more Atari before everyone else woke up. And also during a time where video games didn't have a whole lot of media coverage. So there wasn't like a lot of video game magazines. There certainly wasn't the internet to tell you what games were coming out. You just have to grab it and, you know, hopefully you'd luck out with a cool game. And then other times you're just like, what? <laughs> what am I doing? I don't know what I'm doing. This, is, this isn't this is what I, this is what I thought I was going to be. I don't know. Oftentimes you'd pick up a game just because it had a brand on there that you recognize. And then you play the game and you're just like, well, I, okay, I guess. The games on this list are fueled by my own personal nostalgia and passion, and maybe there's a couple of games on here that you've never heard of. To help me with this video, Bitmap Books just released the Atari 2600 7800, a visual compendium, and this book is a masterpiece. I've always loved this look on Atari games. One thing I love about these Bitmap Books is you don't need to read them cover to cover. You can just open up to random pages and just see something awesome and see what it is. It has a little description on the side, when the game came out, who published the game and all that. This book and books like this are a great way to even find some hidden gems for yourself. You're just like, I never knew that game existed, but that game looks so fun. I want to check it out for myself. Since it's a visual compendium, I love how they put the game's graphics first, big and bold. I love that. And then it tells you a little bit about the game, oftentimes from like the producer or the co-producer. Sometimes game journalists are in here. Yeah, it's awesome. And don't let the name fool you. It features Atari 2600, Atari 7800, and it even features some homebrew games. That's right. These are going to be like the fan-made games that people made later in life. That's so cool. I love stuff like this. This book is just absolutely fantastic. If you'd like to purchase yours, there's a link in the description below. Kick it off with my favorite game for the Atari 2600 and still in my top 10 games of all time. I still play this game today. It's Adventure for the Atari 2600. If you truly believe graphics aren't everything, this game is so good. So this arrow, no, that's your sword. And you have to bring this kind of glowing chalice back to your yellow castle. With other items along the way, like this bridge that will make you go through walls, I thought that was the coolest thing ever. And in this first map, this first stage, um, this is just like the easy one. It's a little, it's almost like a tut the tutorial level. It's just like, here's how you do it, here's what you do. You just bring the trophy back home, and now that I think about it, I think this is the first game I ever beat. <laughs> There's three levels on this one. The first one's pretty easy. The second one has a larger map and also introduces the bat that will pick up items and then drop items and then pick up something else. Very annoying. But same premise, and this one has just, you know, like I said, a bigger map, so there's like an extra castle in here and everything. But the true challenge is the third stage because it's randomly generated. The map stays the same, but the items are placed in different locations. So this one makes it a lot of fun, and like I said, seriously, I still play this game today. I love adventure. A few years ago, I had kind of a recent resurgence with that movie Ready Player One, because that's one of the key features of the film. I'm not going to spoil it for you, but yeah, definitely worth checking out if you can. I actually like E.T. for the Atari 2600. Seriously, once you know how to play it, it's not a bad game. You just have to walk around and collect pieces of your telephone so you can phone home and go back to your home planet. You do have these scientists who try to pull you in the wrong direction. You have these other guys who try to steal pieces of your phone so you gotta go refind them. You'll find Reese's pieces laying around and those will give you more life. Of course, if you run out of life, then you die. But all you gotta do is just follow the clues. Now this game has more potholes than a street in New Jersey. And inside these holes are pieces of your phone. Every screen's gonna have a question mark on it. You activate your button, and then if one of the holes glows, then that's where you know one of the pieces of your telephone is. Once you have all three pieces, you find this little alien critter who could be anywhere on the entire map. And as soon as you hit your button, that's going to call your home ship to come back down to you. You go back to the forest, find your little landing pad, and when the timer runs out, the ship comes by, picks you up, takes you home. Congratulations, you just beat the game. We'll have a more obscure title called Oink. Well, Oink is based on the three little pigs. The big bad wolf is trying to break down your house. One brick at a time. So your job is to grab your bricks and then drop them back where they were. I'm gonna speed up the footage here just a little bit, but as you can see, I mean, it gets pretty intense sometimes. Inevitably, a hole will open up, the big bad wolf will get you, and then you move on to the next house, and now you're down to another player. I had a lot of fun playing this game on a two player. Dragonfire is another personal favorite and features two parts. The first one is you have to cross the bridge, but you have these uh, fireballs coming at you from above and below, so you gotta jump or duck, depending. And the other part, you have to run out and grab all the pieces of treasure without getting hit by these fireballs. Well, sounds easy enough, but the dragon moves faster and faster as the game goes on. <laughs> it, gets, it gets pretty insane. 
So one of the nice things about Atari games is oftentimes you don't really beat them. It's just how far can you get, how fast can you go, how much points can you get. You know, a lot of these games have unlimited gameplay value. Haunted House was always a favorite of ours growing up, too. He plays this set of eyes, that's you, and you have this light, or this torch, basically, that lights up the area. And when you light up the area, you can find these little pieces on the ground, and you have to collect the three pieces to form the full... I'm not sure what it is. An urn, maybe? I don't know. I don't know if I want to know. <laughs> All while avoiding the creatures of this haunted house. There's a bat, there's a ghost, there's a spider. You can find a scepter that will make them go away or make them move away, but you can only carry either pieces of the thing that you're trying to collect or the scepter. You can't carry both at the same time. Once you find all the pieces, you go back to your starting point and congratulations, you just won. And the later levels, you can't see the walls and then sometimes in between the areas have doors that either open or don't. So um, that, that makes it a lot more difficult. Haunted House is a fun one though. I remember playing a lot of Frostbite. I was such a fan of Qbert and this game plays a lot like a Qbert. Every time you jump on one of these pieces of ice, you'll get another piece of your igloo, but you have to hit each row before they reset so you can jump on them again to get more pieces of your igloo. You can change the direction that they're going to with the push of your button, and you're probably gonna have to because there's always stuff in your way. As soon as you complete the igloo, you can go inside and you can move on to the next level. And other levels have other challenges too, but Frostbite's always a fun one. I featured this game on my Must Play Arcades video as well as my Must Play SG-1000 video and I'm featuring it here too because I played it a ton on the Atari 2600. Congo Bongo from Sega, this was their answer to Donkey Kong. But done 3D. And I think it's done 3D pretty well for an Atari 2600 game. Very Donkey Kong-like where you gotta make your way all the way up the platforms to reach the giant ape or monkey or whatever this thing is. But it has that little 3D twist to it, that makes it pretty cool. Now the Atari 2600 version only has two stages but to me that was enough. I've always been a fan of this game. I would love to see a resurgence. It will probably never happen at this point, but I just, I just had a lot of love for Congo Bongo when I was growing up. Keystone Capers was a lot of fun too. You play as a Keystone Cop, <laughs> and you have to try to catch the bad guy. And in this area, there's multiple floors, there's escalators, there's elevators, and you just have to kind of cut him off at the pass and do what you need to do to get this guy caught. And he's running and he's not stopping. If he makes his way all the way to the roof and to the end, then you just lost. So you gotta catch this guy as quick as you can. And there's other like the stolen items that are dropped on the ground that you can pick up along the way too for extra points. Yeah, it's just a fun, simple concept and I just love it. Keystone Capers. You ready for a pretty decent Pac-Man clone? Here's Alien. I mean, this was during a time where there was a thousand Pac-Man clones, but this one, I remember playing it and I remember liking it just fine by itself. I mean, it already looks better than Pac-Man for the Atari 2600, so why not? What this game has that the other one doesn't have is you have this little flamethrower, this little blowtorch, which will make the uh, aliens go away from you. Not for very long, but just kind of pushes them out of the way just for a second so you can buy yourself some extra time. And then once you collect all the dots or whatever these things are, then it goes to this other stage where you have to make your way kind of through, and it turns into a little bit like Frogger, right? Where you have to like make your way through without getting touched. And when you make it through, then it goes on to the next level. Another kind of high score getter in Crackpots. I like this one a lot too. And if you haven't figured it out yet, a lot of these games are from Activision. And to me, Activision was like the Capcom or Konami to the NES. It was a company where you knew you were gonna get something that was gonna be quality. So anyway, Crackpots is you have these spiders crawling up in your house and you have to drop these pots on them <laughs> to kill the spiders. Different levels have spiders moving in different directions, which makes it more difficult. If too many spiders crawl into your house, then you lose a layer of your house, which makes it harder because now you have less time to decide where exactly the spider's gonna come from. And that's basically the premise of uh, Crackpots, yeah. I mean, I don't really consider it too much of a Space Invaders clone, but this is a fun shooter in Demon Attack. And the Atari 2600 had several games that were kind of like this, but for some reason, Demon Attack just stood out to me. I don't know if it was like the kind of ominous music in the background that would, you know, get more and more intense as the stages went on. How the enemy would just spew a buckshot of bullets at you all at once. You know, different enemies for the later levels would happen too. I mean, it was just, um, I had a lot of fun with Demon Attack and it's, I think it's worth checking out. River Raid may be the game that got me to love shooters. And this game features something that a lot of today's shooters don't, and I wish they did. But in River Raid, I mean, it plays like a shooter. You just have to shoot the enemies that are out there, right? You do have fuel, so you gotta be cognizant of that. So when you find these fuel things, you just have to go through them. You'll get your fuel back. But one of the things that this game has that others don't is if you push up, you'll go faster. If you push down, you'll go slower. I wish other shooters did that. Well, this one did. Maybe that's why this one's best. I don't know. River Raid, again, by Activision. 
<laughs> Fathom is kind of a fun game where you can play as a dolphin and a bird. But in Fathom, you're trying to reconstruct Triton's staff to unlock the mermaid or free the mermaid. But you do have enemies in your way, but there's things you can collect, like the seahorses when you're a dolphin. And when you collect the seahorses and unlock a piece of this to the staff, you might unlock the ability to become the bird. And you'll need to do both to uh, beat the game. So here she is locked up. Can't do anything about it right now. But when you have the chance to be the bird, just swim all the way up and then you can start flying around. And then up in the sky, get more enemies, but collect the blimps. And same thing, you can become the dolphin again or get a piece of the staff. You unlock all three pieces of the staff. You can unlock the mermaid. Congratulations, you just won. And that's Fathom. It's unfathomable. Nah, you knew that pun was coming sooner or later. This is No Escape, and No Escape had a neat idea for its time where so many games featured like space invaders. You know, you had to shoot the enemies from below. Well, this one is you have to shoot the ceiling from below and then the tiles from the ceiling will fall down on the enemy and that's how you defeat them. In fact, if you accidentally shoot one of your enemies from below, it'll multiply and come back. You just gotta plan and prepare to find out where the ceiling's gonna be when it falls to defeat the enemy so you can move on to the next stage. And of course, later enemies have like different movement patterns and stuff like that too. So this is, I remember having a lot of fun with No Escape. Another classic arcade game come to the Atari 2600 and done pretty well, I think, is Jungle Hunt. Such a fan of Jungle Hunt. It features four stages. The first one, you have to jump from vine to vine. That's all you gotta do. Just, you know, move at your own pace, but you gotta get there quickly. You have that little timer running out. The next one is you're swimming underwater. You gotta come up for air, and you can't attack these alligators from below. Now, you can't really see the knife in your hand because <laughs> not, not enough graphics for it, I guess. But yeah, you can, it, it works, I promise. Next stage features you jumping over these boulders. Sometimes there's larger boulders that have a higher bounce. So you can duck under them as needed. Now, this part's not exactly like the arcade game, but eh, you know what? It gets the job done. Jump over the two cannibals. You save your girlfriend. And then for some reason, she gets captured again. You gotta do it all over again. <laughs> <laughs> That's video games for ya. <laughs> it's Jungle Hunt, nice. Another favorite of mine was this Smurfs game that I played a lot. Quick shout out to the Smurfs too. one of the greatest soundtracks in cartoon history, because it's all classical music, it's great. The one thing I didn't like about the Smurfs was the button was not jump. To jump, you actually have to push up. And if you push up twice, that's when you do a large jump forward. You can, you can walk forward and kind of like do the diagonal jump and you'll kind of do a little hop. But if you jump, then jump again, then you'll do that larger hop. Features several screens of fun. And at the end, you're kind of in Gargamel's house here at this uh, table. And you gotta jump up and uh, save Smurfette. And the more it goes on, the more enemies and obstacles get in the way too. Played this game a lot when I was growing up. Another great shooter in Vanguard. Huge fan of Vanguard. Now like every other shooter, we have to hit the button to shoot. This one, you're always shooting. You're always firing in a direction. And if you move like left, back, up, whatever, uh, it'll fire in that direction too. So that's kind of nice. If you hold your button down, you stop shooting, but then you can move a lot faster. Every once in a while, you'll find these E-Tanks, and when you fly through them, you'll turn invincible while playing this kind of chump change bootleg song from Flash Gordon. And the enemies change out kind of throughout the game too, which is kind of nice, gives you a little bit of a variety. And then even the levels change kind of throughout the game too, so a lot of fun with Vanguard. Now, Spider-Man's a game I'm adding to the list more because of its nostalgia for me. Is it a great game? Well, I mean, I think I don't think it's terrible. You play as Spider-Man climbing this building. You can save these people that are in the windows for extra points. I honestly never did. I just wanted to see how far I could get. And when you go all the way up this building, which I'm guessing is probably like the Chrysler building or something, you got the Hobgoblin at the top. And when you make your way to the top, then you move on to the next level. And that's Spider-Man in a nutshell. Another game full of nostalgia for me that I still like playing today is Journey Escape. You play as the band Journey. <laughs> trying to get to your little ship thing. You got your obstacles along the way. These hearts represent the fans, the little shifty-eyed promoters, these barricades that are in your way. And you just have to get to the top as quick as you can. Every once in a while, you'll find these little alien-looking guys. These are your roadies, and they're going to make you invincible and so you can go faster through the stage. And sometimes, if you're lucky, you'll find this Kool-Aid man-looking guy, and that's your manager, and he'll make you invincible for the entire rest of the stage. If you get all five to their ship, then you just won the game. It's unfortunately not the superior arcade version of Journey, which I loved, but this game was fine for what it was for the Atari. I remember playing a lot of the game Taz as well. Kind of a puzzle platformer. You're always in kind of tornado mode, and you have to eat the food, not eat the dynamite. That makes sense, right? <laughs> I liked seeing how far I could get, because once you got to a certain depth of the game, or so many points in the game, then the food would change to something else. Simple concept, fun to play. It's just fun. It's Taz. 
In the same universe, we had this Bugs Bunny game, which I remember kind of liking. <laughs> I say kind of, because it's like, I, I remember playing it for the sake of playing it, probably just because it was Bugs Bunny. You have these three platforms, the dog makes the hole, and then you have to jump into the hole to kind of beat that level. And then you move on to the next one, all while avoiding Elmer Fudd's gun. And like any other Atari game, the more the game goes on, the faster it gets, the harder it gets. I like how when you get shot, you're just like, well, whatever. <laughs> Bugs Bunny's okay. Kaboom is a personal favorite of so many, including myself, so I had to include it on the list. You got this robber looking guy dropping bombs, and you have to capture them, you're these buckets of water. It's the game that uses that paddle controller, which is like an analog, makes you, you know, scroll left and right for like breakout and stuff like that. And if even one bomb hits the ground, then you lose one of your buckets of water and the game becomes harder. And the game's already gonna become harder because he starts moving faster and all that, so. Kaboom is just one of those games that, man, people who played it back in the day, they love it today. And I still do too. Be hard to talk about must-play Atari 2600 games without talking about Pitfall. Pitfall was just one of those games that, man, everybody played it and everyone loved it. You just go on an adventure. The different screens have, like, different threats on them and everything. There's these lakes that you gotta cross with the rope. These tar pits. Sometimes they just kind of, like, appear out of nowhere and then disappear, so you gotta time your running to get through it at all. Probably most famous are the alligators, which you can stand on their head, too. But if you stand near their mouth, then you'll get swallowed. And it features two levels, too, where you can actually go down the below part where the scorpions are and everything and it just kind of changes the game's map a little bit. This game doesn't have an ending, it's just how many points can you get in 20 minutes. Pitfall's a classic and inspired a ton of games like this later on too. There's no way I could mention every Atari 2600 game that's worth playing, so make sure you let me know what are some of your favorites in the comments below. If you like this style of video and you want to see must-play games for like Nintendo, Arcade, Genesis, whatever have you, a whole playlist of them right here for you. And of course, to go along with this book, if you want to see the Atari 7800 games you can play, you gotta check out this list right here. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you real soon, and thank you for being you.